Sitisar Hachan, was the third wife of Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II and the real biological mother of Ottoman Sultan Bayezid II. She was one of the daughters of Zul Qadir Oglu Suleiman Bey, the sixth ruler of Dul Qadir state. She was married to Mehmed II on December 15, 1449 in Edirne. Her marriage served as an alliance between the Ottomans in this buffer state. Early life Sitisar Hatchin was born in 1435 in Elbistan, Karaman Maris province, Dual Qadir state. Born as Makrimi, she was the daughter of Suleiman Bey, the sixth ruler of Dual Qadir state. Her aunt Amin Hachan, daughter of Nasreddin Muhammad Bey, the fifth ruler of Dul Qadirids, was married to Sultan Murad's father Mehmed I, while her other aunt was married to the aged Mamluk Sultan at Cairo. Later Aisha Gulbaha Hachan, Suleiman Bey's granddaughter, was married to the future Sultan Bayezid II and became the mother of Selim I, known as the Grim, Suleiman Bey who is described as a man of unshapely corpulence and pathological sensuality but also as a skillful horseman and the owner of magnificent stables, possessed a considerable army of brave, devoted Turkmen and was fabulously wealthy. Two circumstances which in themselves sufficed to incline Murad toward the union of his son and heir with this respected noble families which, centuries later, though dispossessed of its lands, was still revered as a family of royal blood. The Byzantine chronicler Ducas was convinced, not without reason, that one of the Sultan's chief motives in seeking this marriage was to obtain an ally against the arrogant Karamanids and Jahanshah, the chief of the Turkmen black sheep tribe. Marriage When Mehmed turned 17, his father decided that he should to marry to a woman of inferior station for political purposes. The Sultan's choice fell on the wealthy and beautiful daughters of Suleiman Bey, the sixth ruler of Dul Qadir state. It must have been in the winter of 1448-1449 that Murad summoned Kandali Halil Pasha, his trusted Grand Vizier, and informed him of the marriage plans. The Sultan declared that he wished the prince to marry and this time as he, Murad, saw fit. Halil Pasha approved wholeheartedly of his master's plan, whereupon they decided to choose one of Suleiman's daughters. The wife of Hazir Pasha, governor of Amasya, was sent to Elbistan to select the bride in accordance with ancient custom. Her choice fell on Sitisar Hachan, the most beautiful of the daughters. The intermediary kissed her eyes and put the engagement ring on the finger. Later the same matron, this time accompanied by Saruka Pasha, the sultan's favoured advisor in family matters returned to the court of Elbistan to bring the chosen bride home to Rumalia. The most distinguished nobles of the land escorted the young girl across the mountains to the former Ottoman capital of Bursa, where the judges, the Alema and the sheikhs of the religious orders came to meet her in solemn procession and then onward across the Dardanelles. At the news the cortege was approaching, Murad sent out the grandees of the realm from Edirne to meet his future daughter-in-law, who continued on the sultan's residence with her imposing retinue. The wedding took place on 15 December 1449 at Edirne and was celebrated with a great pomp for three months. Popular festivities of all sorts and poetry contests contributed to the rejoicings. The bridegroom, who had not been consulted on the choice of his bride, returned with her to Manisa immediately after the celebration. The marriages seemed to have childless and not very happy. Apparently, the whole arrangement was not to Mehmed liking. Death Long after Mehmed had removed his court to Istanbul, Sitisar Hachan remained behind Edin, where she lived, lonely and forsaken. Until the end of April 1467, she founded Huax in Edin and its region. Her WAQF in the old Ottoman capital constructed a mosque finished in 1485. Two years after the conclusion of the building works Sitisar Hachin died. It is seemed likely that her niece Aisha Gulbaha, in devotion to her memory, completed the mosque which bears her name and beside which she rests under the open sky in a grave now completely uncared for her.
The two cracked tombstones have been removed from the shrubbery and taken to the city museum. The mosque is today used by a hay barn. Bibliography Franz Babinger, Mehmed the Conqueror and His Time, Princeton University Press, ISBN 9780-691-01078-6